Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnant Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation architectural models. So before I understand the architecture models, uh, first I'm trying to explain a vCenter server use case scenarios. If we familiar with the vCenter use case scenarios, it's easy to understand VCF architectures. Okay, so now let's start with the first point vCenter use case scenarios. So vCenter use case scenarios, we already familiar, we discussed a couple of times previously and let quickly recap. So normally when we plan to deploy a vCenter server, we have to verify our vCenter resource requirement. So that resource requirements can be based on the customer infrastructure deployment size. Let's say customer infrastructures are like a tiny infrastructure, small infrastructure, medium, large, and X large. It's a similar to T-shirt sizing. So based on the sizing only, we have to choose our vCenter resource requirement. And similarly, if we have a multiple sites, we require a multiple vCenter servers the same scenario applicable for vcf also and suppose if you quickly compare the small medium and large normally small means our infrastructure maximum host up to 100 esxi host and medium means our esxi hosts are up to 400 esxi host and large means it's up to 1000 years success. If your infrastructure more than 1000 years success, it's considered as a X large infrastructure. Okay, so this basic point we already aware. So now quickly understand how, how many V centers we can deploy in our customer environment and we can compare with the three scenarios small, medium, and large. Now, let's say V center use case scenario if you compare with a small small organization, normally one vCenter server is enough. And within our one vCenter server, we can create the data center and create a cluster. Under cluster, we can enable the all our vCenter features like HA, DRS, and virtual SAN. And within our cluster, we can configure a resource pool also. So resource pool means pool of resources. It will provide a CPU and memory resources to all the virtual machine. So either we can create a multiple cluster or within a cluster under the cluster we can create a resource pool for example within our vcenter server i have a three esxi host three esxi host means first we can configure a data center under data center we can create a three node cluster so in this cluster we can enable ha and drs and we can start configuring the management vms and workload vms suppose in future our customers say instead of all the management VMs and workload VMs, I want to segregate. If you want to segregate your management VMs and workload VMs under the cluster, we can create a resource pool. One resource pool we can dedicate for management VM and another resource pool we can dedicate for a workload VMs. So let's understand what is difference between management VMs and workload VMs. Normally, management VMs means all our infrastructure components like vCenter server, it is considered as a management VM. Our Active Directory server, DNS server, and any of the monitoring tool server, backup server, antivirus server, vulnerability assessment server, these all considered as a management VM. And workload VMs is nothing but a, we are using a web servers, application servers, and database servers, or any of the modern application servers. All those application related web db and app all are considered as a workload vms so customer don't want to mix the management vms with workload vm that scenario we can segregate using the resource pool so that's the reason i just mentioned as a resource that resource can be either a cluster or resource pool suppose if you have a more than three years success host instead of using resource pool we have an option to three node cluster dedicate for management vm another three node cluster dedicate for a workload vm in future if your resource are more resource needed for your workload means within that three node cluster we can add additional nodes okay and same way for management vm if your management vm require additional resources within the three node cluster you can add a additional nodes so you can segregate directly under cluster level or if you have less resource if you are running with only one cluster we can segregate using resource pool so that's why i just mentioned as this circle is represent as a resource either it is a cl under cluster you can configure or you can configure under the resource pool 
okay this is only within a small infrastructure scenario suppose if we go for a manage uh, medium range infrastructure so when we have a medium range infrastructure we have a we customer requirement is they want to segregate two compartments one compartment represent as a intranet compartment another compartment is internet compartment because within the management vm workload vm customer may have one is for intranet means internal communication internet means it's for a external communication so they want to segregate definitely during this scenario one v center is not enough we should go for a two v centers so one v center dedicate for intranet v center another v center dedicate for internet v center even again for internet domain we need a separate active directory separate dns separate all the management vms we need to configure here and workload vms also internet facing servers we can deploy on a internet vCenter. This is in the another scenario. But when compared with the small range and medium range, our vCenter count is increased to two. Okay. And now suppose our organization size is large organization. Definitely vCenter count is increased from two to four vCenters. vCenter 1, vCenter 2, vCenter 3 and vCenter 4. But why I need a four vCenters means even Earlier, we configured management VM, workload VM, all are in a within one vCenter. But in the large organization, they want to segregate these two also. So they sub prepared a separate vCenter for management VM. They prepare a separate workload vCenter for workload VM. And similarly for internet compartment, internet management VM, one vCenter, internet workload VMs, one vCenter. Okay, so why we are segregating multiple vCenters is depends on the organization infrastructure size only. Suppose if your organization is small, all intranet, internet, all compartments we can configure within one vCenter is enough. But only thing is our network level, we have to do the segmentations. And we need to allow some certain ports within our one vCenter. But our infrastructure size is growing. It's recommended to split it into the two compartment or split it into the four compartments. So four compartment means two compartments dedicated for intranet and two compartment dedicated for internet. Okay. So hope you understand the vCenter use case scenario. The same scenario applicable for a VMware Cloud Foundation as well. Normally VMware Cloud Foundation, VCF have a two architectural models. One is consolidated, another one is standard. So consolidated is like a small infrastructure size. All are configured within a consolidated architecture. And standard architecture means always it is like a splitted method. We instead of configuring management workload all in a one v center we are splitting into the multiple domains the same scenario applicable for a vcf scenario let me explain you the vcf architecture now so vmware cloud foundation in short form vcf architecture so as i mentioned we should start with a small when we go for a vcf architecture we have a two types of architecture the first with the small method that is like a consolidated architecture so start with a consolidated architecture if you see the right side diagram our base foundation we have a four esxi host on top when you plan to combine vcf means we are combining vcf using stdc manager it will only combine v relay suit and vSphere, vSAN, and NSX. So all are considered as a VCF software stack. So on top of the VCF software stack, we can configure multiple virtual machine. This virtual machine can be either monolithic application, tier-based application, or you can run it as a modern applications, container-based applications. And VMware officially says this VCF is always flexible to scale out without compromise. That means you can add the nodes whenever is necessary. So that is the reason I mentioned the point elastic scaling to meet the changing of changing business mandates. OK, and the first key point here is integrated management and workload domain because it is a consolidated architecture. It is more suitable for the small organizations. They may go for a consolidated architecture. So that means they are integrated with a management and workload domain. Management and workload domain means management consists of management VM and workload domain consists of all our production business critical application VMs. Okay, and the initial setup start with a four nodes, one, two, three, four. So that's why I mentioned as four node, low cost configuration and minimal investment to get started with VCF architecture.
okay suppose in future customer wa need a additional workloads they want to run on a vcf environment definitely they need a, they need to add additional nodes that architecture we call it as a standard architecture so expand to standard architecture so standard architecture means it's a separate management and workload domain that means within our compartment four nodes we dedicated for a management and four node we dedicated for a workload that is also depends on the resource requirement and that is the reason i mentioned a separate management and separate workload domains and enable cost effective infrastructure scaling and dynamically add new applications and workloads so applications workload previously we have only four three applications now we are dynamically add a additional applications okay and so on so this is the main difference between vcf consolidated architecture and standard architecture but you may have a question let's say my customer have a very less less budget at present they want to configure on a two nodes but vmware officially says with the latest version 4.5 even we can implement the vcf on a two node two nodes also so we can implement vcf on a two node level and but the recommendation to start with this four node but the, some of the test case or poc scenario still if you want to run vcf on a two node it's possible okay but recommendation is for starts with a four node only but uh, some customers they may request for a i do not have budget for four nodes at present maybe in the future after six month we may invest a additional two nodes so that case also vmware given a flexibility to run vcf on a two nodes as well okay and expanding through the additional nodes is nothing but a standard architecture and this expansion not only limited to eight nodes even in future the scale up the workload domain if the workloads are uh, application vms and customer new projects are coming means they need to add additional nodes so add more es access to scale the capacity and uh, dynamically scale apps into workloads even the workloads also increasing and match application performance to infrastructure okay normally uh, vmware recommendation or customer recommendation to meet their sles always we should maintain a 20% buffer if you calculate all your cpu memory disk and ssd if you compare with a 100 percentage always recommend to use until the 80% and will maintain a 20% buffer okay because sometime application may go over 90% or over 80% warnings and alerts to avoid that situation we should maintain a 20% buffer okay and another point is scale out scale out means adding the nodes sdt manager instance if you see in the right side diagram we are keep adding the nodes and virtual machines also increasing so continue to add new apps and workloads and expand to more sdc manager instances and dynamically scale new apps and workloads okay so that is also possible within the vcf standard architecture so we verified the conceptual diagram now i am trying to explain this in a physical environment model let's say vcf consolidated architecture in a consolidated model means as we know minimally start with a four vsan ready nodes so vmware recommend to configure virtual san on a management domain and workload domain we can configure any of the third party storage solutions like uh, uh, for workload domain we can configure hpe primera or hpe synergy hpe 3 power any of the storages we can use now we can add the additional nodes whenever is necessary and to communicate between all the cs access host physical servers we need a top of rack switches and we can also maintain a one management switch that is a optional and if you see the above top rack switch nodes this rack is fully populated with vsan ready nodes okay and this the first below for initial start we are starting with a management domain and whatever we added a additional node that is considered as a virtual infrastructure one that means it's a workload domain vms and another group we can make, make it as a virtual infrastructure two means another workload domain and we have a some servers are free that servers we can may use for a available capacity in future either virtual infrastructure one require additional nodes we can expand and similarly virtual infrastructure two require additional nodes we can expand okay because uh, nowadays if you are using a hpe green lake model normally they they provide a subscription based model pay as you go model and they will always keep one or two nodes it in our 
on premises data center whenever is necessary we can add the additional capacity okay the same way here we mention here some available capacity some buffer nodes also we need to recommend to keep in our customer data center okay so this entire consolidator architecture this is a physical rack view suppose if you want to compare with a logical diagram this is the logical diagram see we have a servers physical esx servers and on top we configured management domain within the management domain we can create a two resource pool one resource pool dedicated for management vm another resource pool dedicated for workload vms and to communicate between all esx hosts we require a top rack switch okay so now let's talk about a vcf standard architecture physical infrastructure model so same like consolidated so our standard architecture means we are adding additional nodes so minimally start with the four ready nodes vsan ready nodes and then we can populate with uh, some additional rack for workload domain top of rigs same like uh, consolidated so until this we are familiar now now in future if you want to expand your nodes how we can expand is this rack is completely full that means we need to add a additional rack so within the rack we can add the nodes but it's not only limited to second rack we can add rack 3 rack 4 rack 5 and so on so expandable as needed up to vSphere configuration maximum and if you um, reach the limitation again we need to add a additional vcf setup and we start following the same method start with a consolidation architecture and expand it to the standard architecture model okay and to communicate all these racks we in, on the top we require a inter rack switches so using inter rack switches only we can communicate between all these racks and even virtual infrastructure one vms can communicate to the second rack okay so this top rack switches we call it as a inter rack switches top rack switches within a rack and inter rack switches is it will help you to communicate between multiple racks okay so hope we are familiar with now what is difference between vcf consolidated architecture and standard architecture let's quickly observe the comparison so vspr vcf architecture consolidated versus standard so here the comparison high level comparison so let's start with a consolidation architecture we have a physical server management and workload domain running on a same rack that is the rack one so that means smaller environments can use a consolidator architecture model suppose for our organization if we plan to expand the additional nodes that is nothing but a standard architecture so here not only rack one in future if you need a additional workloads we can add a new rack rack two but management domain one domain is enough but workload domain we can configure multiple workload domains so we can expand the rack two rack three and so on until the rack n okay and if you want to communicate between all these racks we need to add a inter rack switches so inter rack switch will help you to connect to the all the racks okay same way for another inter rack switch it will also help you to connect to the all the rack all the multiple racks okay and now the benefit of standard architecture is most deployment use the standard architecture model most of the customers the based on the vcf usage model in general, they start with a consoled architecture for the POC or testing. Once their test and POC is successful, they will move it to a standard architecture model. Okay. So this is a high level comparison between VCF architecture consolidation and standard. Okay. Hope you clear about all this architecture comparison. In the later session, I will explain you how what is difference between management domain VI domain and how we can implement this process and all okay and also we should learn vcf where we can run and how how we can manage the vcf infrastructure okay so that's it thank you so if you're watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to gnan cloud garage channel and if you're already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now